All right, hey, what's up, everybody? Mike Lindsley back with you here at the Phoenix Sports Restaurant. This place is fantastic. Make sure you get down here for the lunch buffet every day, $9.95. Uh, it's an all-you-can-eat buffet, plus you get a uh, coffee or a soda with it. Uh, in addition, you can get here for the Sunday brunch from 7 a.m. until 1 p.m. And, of course, as you're here, you see the monitors all across, all behind me. They're all around the place. They have the races on all over the country, including Saratoga. Now, keep in mind, Saratoga Racetrack with two dark days this year, Monday and Tuesday. They will not race as they open up up the track a week early. Uh, it's from a training standpoint and kind of a health care uh, standpoint and, and just kind of the state of the state of the sport right now with two dark days. They figure they'll go hard from Tuesday until Sunday. But you can come down here to the Phoenix Sports Restaurant. You can get some great food, a great atmosphere, and of course, uh, over there next door, bet at the OTB as well. They will even help you uh, with your wagers if you are unfamiliar with how to do so. So come on down here to the Phoenix Sports Restaurant, an official and proud sponsor of the ML Sports Platter. And don't forget, gift cards are always available. Well, the 2019 Open Championship starts on Thursday this week. It's just a couple days away as we record this. And a couple of key storylines for me, obviously it's in Northern Ireland. It's at Royal Port Rush, And Rory McIlroy has got to be at the top of the list. He has to be. Uh, he's the native son. Uh, he's a guy who's looking for his fifth major. Uh, and he's going to face a lot of pressure I think from the media from every angle in terms of the questions, not just being back, not just being the native son, but about the political unrest, about the religious unrest that still resides in Northern Ireland. Remember, a lot of people don't realize this. The United Kingdom is made up of Northern Ireland, England, Scotland, and Wales, and then Ireland's over here. Ireland is its own property. It's not like Ireland and Northern Ireland are together, and you can see on the golf leaderboard that when you see Padraig Harrington, he has an Irish flag, but if you see Graham McDowell, if you see Rory McIlroy, uh, you know, those guys, uh, and Darren Clark, they have the Northern Ireland flag, which I believe is a, a white with a, a red uh, in, in the middle of some, of some sort. So, um, there's a lot of unrest there still from the political standpoint, from the religious standpoint. Uh, you have a situation going on where, uh, you know, it's amazing to me that this even got to Royal Port Rush. I can't believe that Northern Ireland got... Um, uh, you know, this major, considering all the amenities that they needed, considering all the construction that they needed, considering all the funding that they needed, it is just extremely difficult uh, to, to get a major. Uh, and for Royal Port Rush uh, in Northern Ireland, a country, by the way, that has the land mass that is equal to Connecticut or West Virginia. Think about that for a minute. The states in the United States, West Virginia's land mass and Connecticut's land mass is basically equal to Northern Ireland. And Northern Ireland, by the way, has only 1.7 million people who reside in it. And you can drive from the north to the south in about an hour and a half and drive east to west in about two hours. So it's just remarkable that a place this small can get this kind of a golf tournament uh, in. Uh, their golf courses are spectacular though. If you read uh, what the, 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 the native people say about them uh, and you read you know Darren Clark and Rory McIlroy and, and Graham McDowell and the, the courses that they grew up on uh, you know by the Irish Sea and all that it's just spectacular golf uh, that whole Belfast Northern Ireland tour, uh, sort of area I went to Ireland six years ago uh, hit uh, towns like Killarney uh, and, and hit Waterford and hit Dublin and, and some of those places of course but um, boy I, I really would love to go up to Northern Ireland and see that place and it's going to be a very uh, a hard uh, thing here, I think, for uh, for Rory McIlroy. There's going to be a lot of pressure on this guy. Uh, as far as the winner, uh, I'm going to take Justin Rose in this one. Uh, I think his game is tailor-made for all the golf courses across the board. I think this guy, uh, it's amazing when you look at how hard golf is for Justin Rose I, I just cannot say enough about this guy's game. When you watch him all the time, I think he's won 24 times worldwide, but when you watch him in every single big-time golf tournament, if you watch him uh, in the majors, you watch him in the players, uh, you watch him all over the place, you are stunned when you watch his full game from A to Z, from T to green, when you look at his drives, when you look at his mid-iron shots, when you look at his putting, it's stunning to me how this guy has not won more, one more major uh, than he already has. Remember, he won back in 2013 when he won the U.S. Open at Marion, but he's finished second in all the other majors. Uh, he's come up short a couple times in the Masters. He's had a ton of top fives. He's had a ton of top tens. But this guy always seems to be around that leaderboard and always in contention. And I think this week he's going to have a big week and go ahead and win the Open Championship. I think John Rahm is going to finish second. And I'll take Billy Horschel in a weird place uh, for third um, win uh, or in a show for third uh, for my win place show. So I'll go Justin Rose winner. I'll go John Rahm two. And I'll go Billy Horschel. 
uh, finishing third. By the way, Northern Ireland, can you believe that they have produced three unbelievably great golfers? Rory McIlroy, who's a four-time major winner, Graham McDowell, a major winner, Darren Clark, a couple of British Opens, of course, to his resume. Uh, it's just absolutely stunning to me uh, in, in how that they have, uh, with that small a country, produced the greatness that they have uh, in the game of golf. It's absolutely stunning. Now, Tiger Woods is going to tee off later in the day, uh, and he is uh, another factor to watch here. Uh, the Open Championship, I thought, was going to be uh, the tournament that if he was going to win another major, uh, it was going to be the Open Championship, I thought, because he is able to take the driver right out of the bag and we know that we've seen Tiger kind of with the erratic tee shots left and right uh, all over the place here the last few years. But if you can keep the driver in the bag uh, and hit those stingers down the fairway, that ball will bounce. This is the this is the Open Championship. You can hit a ball 280, 290 yards. Next thing you know, it flies 330, 340. Uh, so you've got that situation going on with Woods. Can he maintain it? Can he manage the course? Can he play very well over four days? That's going to be a big-time question. Don't sleep on Phil Mickelson in this tournament. He's won it before. He knows these uh, courses like the back of his hand. Uh, Americans have had unbelievable success in the Open Championship in the history of the game, looking at Mickelson, looking at Woods, looking at Tom Watson, looking at Jack Nicklaus, uh, Arnold Palmer. There's been a bunch of different players that have had tremendous success in terms of winning uh, the Open Championship. So don't sleep on Phil either. I'm also looking forward to seeing if we can get a first-time major winner. Perhaps Matt Kuchar, an American, breaks through and wins it. Perhaps Ricky Fowler, an American, comes through and wins it. Could we have a first-time major winner? It's going to be also interesting to see if guys like Jason Day, Dustin Johnson, guys like that, if they can improve on their overall resume and their legacy. I just think that the Open Championship is probably the coolest, most unique major out there. I don't know if it's my favorite necessarily, but it's certainly the most unique and certainly the coolest. When you think about the, the longevity of these golf courses, uh, the Claret Jug, the oldest trophy, the oldest tournament, uh, you look at the uniqueness of the course, the bounces, the, the, the Irish Sea, uh, all the water that's always around these unbelievable places, and it doesn't matter whether the tournament is played at Hoy Lake, whether it's going to be played at Royal Port Rush this weekend, it's going to be played at St. Andrews, it doesn't matter where it's going to be played. Uh, the flat-out truth of the matter is uh, it's got just the uniqueness to it uh, with, with with the surrounding water and the little village houses and all the rest all around the place and, and the bunkers and the way the ball bounces around the, uh, the, the the sort of a bouncy grassy knoll type of fairway and obviously just the age of the course the age of the tournament the age of the trophy uh, it's just awesome stuff the open championship is so cool also from a, an American viewership standpoint because we roll up right out of bed and we flip on the golf I mean how cool is that you grab your brunch and golf have your breakfast, grab your bowl of cereal, cook up some eggs and sausage, and just flip on the uh, the Open Championships. So uh, it should be fun. I'm super happy for Northern Ireland that they got it. I wish Rory McIlroy the best of luck because this week is going to be an awfully, awfully tough one for him from a pressure standpoint, and I will take Justin Rose to win it. I'm Mike Lindsley. Thanks for watching me here. Nine minutes on IGTV, Facebook, and on YouTube. Make sure you get down here to the Phoenix Sports Restaurant. If you are in and around Central New York, your home visiting family and friends stop by come here lunch buffet every day 995 it includes a soda or coffee you can also see all the horse races all around the monitors you can bet next door at the OTB and make sure to get here for Sunday brunch as well Mike puts out all the best food he's got a great array of lunch items, breakfast items, the sausage, the pancakes, the French toast, the eggs, you name it. He's got it all at the Sunday brunch, 7 a.m. to 1 p.m. every single Sunday here at the Phoenix Sports Restaurant. In addition, uh, you can also come down here just, you know, post-game little happy hour after work or whatever the case may be, and, of course, grab some beverages and a burger as well. The Phoenix Sports Restaurant, a proud sponsor of the ML Sports Platter. As I always tell you, enjoy the games.